All right, guys, next one. We got another series circuit. I've tried to mess you up, though. How have I tried to mess you up? Well, I've given you the total voltage at 24 volts. I've given you R1 at 2 ohms. So let's drop that in there. Uh, but I haven't given you R2 or R3, and it looks like I've given you all the voltages in terms of uh, V1. So this guy is the first voltage. This voltage right here is two times the first voltage. And this guy is the first voltage plus another 8 volts. What's going on? You don't have any currents. I don't have any, I've given you one resistance value, and now all the voltages are in terms of the first voltage. Well, this is just um, to get you used to transposition. Why are we getting used to transmission? Who knows, because we're never going to use it in the chorus. Um, it's just a way to show you um, that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. But um, just before you have a stroke here, if we have an equation like this later on, XL is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times L, then we can transpose that equation to give us L equal XL divided by 2 pi f. Now for some that was black magic. Not sure how we found those values. So another way to simplify things without doing transposition is to take this equation here and just drop it into an Ohm's law chart here. Right? XL is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times L. Now if we need to find the L value we can see that it's XL divided by 2 times pi times the frequency. So what I'm going to show you here is just to reinforce the fact that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. Uh, but don't have a stroke because we're going to be using the Ohm's Law charts so that we don't have to do transposition ever again in the course. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. Okay, so now we're stuck. We've got to find, well, we know the total voltage, and we know that the sum of the voltage drops across each of the, re the resistors is supposed to equal the source, right? So we know that Vt is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So now we're going to drop in the values that we know so far for each of those guys. We know that our total voltage is 24 volts. We know that everything given is in terms of V1. V2 is actually 2 times the first voltage, and then V3 is V1 plus another 8 volts. Okay, excellent. Now we've got everything in terms of V1, and if we put some brackets around those guys, we can see that we can add those guys up. So now we can do 24 volts is equal to 1V1, 3V1, 4 times the first voltage plus another 8 volts. Getting close now. We're almost at uh, V1 now. Once we find V1, we can find everything. But we need to get rid of this 8 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 8 volts from this side. Whatever we do to that side, we got to do to this side. All right, so 24 minus the 8 volts is going to give me 16 volts. Okay, so again, we had 24 volts is equal to 4 times the first voltage plus another 8 volts. I just want V1. So in order to get rid of this plus 8 volts, I subtract 8 volts to get rid of it. Whatever I do the right-hand side, I have to do to the left-hand side of the equation. So now 24 minus the 8 gives me 16 is equal to the 4 times the V1 that I had remaining on the right side of the equation. Excellent. I still need just V1, and now I have 4 times V1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this side by the same value, by 4. And that will eliminate the 4, and I'll just have the V1. Well, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So we can finally find that V1 is equal to 16 divided by 4. Right. So V1 is equal to 4 volts. If I lost you there, then stop and rewind, and you can find each of the, the values, and rock through, and then see if you can find how I found that 4 volts. Okay, now we know the voltage across the first resistor. It is 4 volts. Okay, the second resistor was 2 times that value, so 2 times 4 gives me 8 volts. 
And the third resistor was V1, which is 4 volts, plus another 8. So I got 12 volts across the third resistor. Kirchhoff's law was the fact that this voltage and this voltage and this voltage are supposed to sum to give me my 24 volts, which they do. 12 plus the 8 plus the 4 gives me 24 volts as the source voltage. Very nice. Now we've got our voltages. We have one individual current, sorry, one individual resistance. So now we can find our current. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2 amps. And now we're flying. That 2 amps comes right across and it goes through each of those resistors. Okay, now we can find our individual resistance values. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6 ohms. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4 ohms. Already found this guy. And 24 divided by 2 gives me 12 ohms. And let's just double check our values because the 6, the 4, and the 2 are supposed to add to sum to give us our total resistance of 12, which it does. Very nice. Last thing we need is the power. Remember, for these guys, I am just doing voltage times current. Let's keep it nice and simple. 12 volts times 2 amps is going to give me 24 watts. Here I got 16 watts. Here I got 8 watts. And here I should have 48. So let's just double check. 8 plus the 16 plus the 24. Yeah, that adds to give me 48 watts as the total. Very nice. So, a little bit of transposition. Don't have a stroke because we're not going to use transposition. We're going to try and use Ohm's Law charts throughout the course and try in order to simplify going back and forth between different terms.